You seem to be training him to be a warrior. Is that entirely wise? Jimmy never tried in anger, or use it for your own gain. You will be a knight Templar, soldier in the service of God. Leave Jerusalem without giving that back. And you and your brother Templars will have safe passage wherever you wish. My duty is to protect Jerusalem. Even if the decision was mine to make, my answer would still be no. Then you will die. It's all in the hands of God. You swear to uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand, and never to share our secrets nor divulge the true nature of our work, and to do so from now until death, whatever the cost. Together, we will usher in the door. And so make sure you're glued to and, and, and sticking to that again because if you're following Vatican II, you're literally being led <clears throat> with a noose around your neck into this formal apostate church under the banner of obedience. Okay, and again, the church does not teach false obedience, does not teach blind obedience. Okay, we have to know what the Catholic Church says when a uh, prelate, when a pope, or even a quote-unquote council makes errors uh, makes heresies we say no we want nothing to do with it uh, and we will wait for that time of correction if you will so we'll continue to resist until that time uh, has arisen and so we know it's it's tough going through the storm if you will uh, say for example during the Aryan crisis which lasted uh, a couple hundred years obviously when they were going through that period they were continuing to resist while I'm sure these Aryan heretics were calling them heretics uh, in return. So it's very similar in our time period where uh, you simply have pe people, uh, prelates included, popes included, who, who are just so gone from the Catholic faith that they can no longer make these proper judgments on who is actually even a Catholic. And again, it pertains to our position on uh, these uh, quote-unquote canonizations of these modernists. Uh, a modernist can't canonize another modernist um, who is teaching the same errors or heresies that he is. Uh, and so obviously we have to just wait the storm out. It's, it's uh, something that we have to just continue to resist, but certainly we do not recognize them as saints. Uh, when you actually uh, read and study what these popes, uh, what these popes have stated um, uh, concerning what they believe, it becomes very apparent that they do not have the Catholic faith. Again, we can state this, we can state this as theological opinion, I don't have just authority to depose them of their position. And so that is a clear <coughs> distinction between our position and the state of a contest position. And so, we know that there will be uh, lying wonders that will be associated uh, in this time, so we have to be careful. Uh, I know, for example, that Medjugorje, with some of the, the signs and wonders that the Maitreya is actually claiming those. And I actually had a video, if I can find it, I'll make another note, uh, that actually stated from one uh, someone who was close to one of the seers that uh, essentially that this was the case. So I'll try to look for that. But on September 11th, 2012, the MDM stated that the new era will be heralded by my second coming. Okay, this clearly runs contrary to approved Catholic prophecy because we know the new era, the, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, is not preceded or it is not in conjunction with Christ's second coming. 
And again, that's why I tell you it's very deceptive because it uh, it's a setup. It's a setup for this Master Jesus character um, who is going to, in my opinion, formally unite all religions and this suppo supposed utopia uh, will occur, right? And so I know there was actually, I think I believe it was Father Martin who said within the Satanist or occultic circle that once the the Satanists, once these these enemies of the Catholic Church um, had obtained um, the Citadel or, or the Vatican, that they would usher in this this thousand year reign. Um, and I have that on f a few videos of mine where he's stating that. And so, you know, we have these diabolical sects, if you will, all teaching this you know thousand thousand year reign. I believe Hitler was another who who stated, uh, you know, that his master race would, would take over for a thousand years. And so, you know, a lot of, a lot of these um, diabolical sects are using uh, the thousand year uh, time period to propagate uh, what their agenda is, or their position. And so, uh, once again, uh, this was on... Let's see, it was in September, but just to continue further on what she's saying, the, the new era, era will be heralded by my second coming. The time is short. Uh, and again, uh, th this this same error uh, can be found in Father Gobi's works. He actually taught the millennialist heresy as well. Uh, and so uh, I do have a section that was completely... Uh, devoted to uh, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart on Defeat Modernism, so maybe I'll post that in the, the comment section. But uh, <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, we can understand that this this uh, heresy is, is floating around there, and it's deceiving. Uh, I've, I've seen it even deceive some traditionalists even. Uh, I recall a conversation I had with someone was several weeks back who was actually holding to this position in, in a, a traditional circle, someone who was like minded like us. And I, I, I found that um I found that a bit strange considering I would say for the most part we, we understand we know what's going on. So uh you know we do have to be careful that this doesn't uh infiltrate uh into uh, the remnant, if you will, into those who can clearly see what's going on and where Vatican II is ultimately taking us. Now in August uh, 31st, 2012, the MDM states that no one knows the truth of the real contents of the book of Revelation. Only God knows. Uh, she goes on to uh, state, only I, the Lamb of God, have the authority to reveal what they contain. I do this now through my messenger, Maria Divine Mercy, who will convey my words, not hers, to, hers, to a disbelieving world. Uh, world. So, we know from Catholic teaching that uh, a private revelation is certainly not the end all <coughs> to scripture and the catholic church itself is the true interpreter uh, of the bible and, and of the apocalypse it certainly is not the mdm and again we've already reiterated how um the church in the sense that we still recognize uh, these modernists who hold uh, legal and lawful uh, authority within uh the church uh, that we do recognize that they have jurisdiction but they're, they're simply not catholic um, and so we, we would be waiting for that eventual de decree down the road at the future council uh, by a future, by a few future Pope to reiterate basically what I'm saying. That is our position. Uh, so here again, um, you know, Protestantism, Protestantism is based upon a supposed private, private revelation, but it deviates from the Catholic faith. And so, uh, again, once we know what the consensus, uh, you know, of the church fathers taught on certain scriptures, uh, the Catholic Church will then make uh, the judgment upon that, and then th this is what we have to believe. So, obviously, um, you know, the apocalypse uh, would be interpreted by the church. It's not going to be interpreted uh, by the MDM, and um, you know, this notion that no man knows the truth uh, is, is certainly nonsense and it's certainly not Our Lady, it's certainly not our God talking to the MDM on this 
Um, let's see, on August 23rd, 2012. If the second coming of my beloved son were to occur without warning, my precious children would never enter the gates of my new paradise. They would never have to be able to prepare their souls and would not be fit to be admitted into the new era of peace. Your love for my precious son will be rewarded in that I will grant immunity from the gates of hell to those souls for whom you pray. Again, this is more erroneous teaching that the second coming is uh, the new era of peace, if you will, and again, thus setting up the stage for this uh, Master Jesus uh, character, uh, who I might <coughs> add within the new age uh, circles, uh, is kind of a spitting image to the Divine Mercy photograph, and we know as traditionalists we stay away from the Divine Mercy, we're not going to get into that uh, topic tonight, uh, but perhaps I will make a note right now, let us... Um, talk about that topic uh, over the next week or two, but um, uh, we, we see that uh, we see that this is a contradiction on the teaching of free will for those who die and reject the church and Christ uh, do not receive God's mercy, uh, and, and this is another uh, aspect of the divine mercy, and which is a part of the conciliar sect, which more specifically pertains to the charis, uh, charismatic portion of the conciliar sect um, and it pertains to uh, this pseudo notion of mercy that these conciliars have and we've covered this enough and I've been warning people that uh, you know under this banner of quote unquote mercy they were going to continue to destroy the discipline and destroy the doctrines of the church and so, uh, you know, please be careful and weary of that. You can, um, well, let's get into the next message. The next is uh, from August. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I want to do this one. Here it is. Yeah, it's a follow up to the Mercy. Uh, it was in December 2nd, 2011. Uh, Divine Mercy, <clears throat> Maria Divine Mercy um, gets a message which states that my mercy covers all races, colors, and religions. I pour out my love and mercy so that it covers all my children in every corner of the world, covering all races, all colors, all religions, and all sinners. Again, commentary on this is that those who reject uh, the truth are outside God's mercy insofar as they are not repentant to that truth. So within the context of Catholic Church teaching, individuals who reject truth, who reject the Catholic Church, reject the Catholic faith, are outside of God's mercy in the sense that they would have to be repentant in order to come back and receive that mercy. Uh, and so this is very deceptive. Uh, again, it, it pertains to the universalism of the conciliar church because the universalists, uh, which, which ultimately comes from the Freemasons, is to denote that everyone is equal, that, that all religions are equal, without actually formally saying it yet, which will be done here shortly, I suggest to you, perhaps in the next three years or so, by year's end 2017, it seems more than a possibility, as Father Malachi Martin was giving uh, a forewarning on that shortly before his death. Uh, but nevertheless, we have to understand that there's only one true religion, and within this true religion, if you will, within the body of Christ, this is where uh, mercy pertains to. Uh, we go to confession to, uh, to be absolved, to uh, receive God's mercy. Uh, and for those who are holding to a, a heretical and erroneous teachings, those who reject Jesus Christ, those who reject the truth, are outside of mercy. Uh, and so that's a key. Uh, that's a key understanding, and it and it makes sense because those we know from church, Catholic Church teaching that if a soul dies in mortal sin, okay, they're going they're going to go to hell. Uh, they're not going to be in heaven. Uh, and so, uh, if, if this were the case, if mercy were covering all false religions, it means that they wouldn't have to convert. 
Uh, and so again, this is the deception which comes from the conciliar sect, and it's just blatantly poor theology coming from Maria Divine Mercy. Uh, also, I found a, a very odd <laughs> message on October 20th, 2011. It says the death of my son, uh, Gaddafi. And uh, I had, uh, I just, <laughs> this one is just, this one's just absurd. You know, I didn't know Gaddafi was a Catholic and he, he was a martyr for the faith. Um, I really don't, this, this one is so obscenely absurd. I really don't even know where to begin with this one. Uh, but nevertheless, again, you will find those proponents of the MDM uh, trying to defend and back this this message would say, you know, we can't judge another person or this or that. And I think everyone can see through the, the haze on this one, if you will, uh, to know and understand uh, that Gaddafi uh, certainly was not Catholic and did not stand for the faith. Uh, another message, October 13th, 2011. Um, it is a message entitled, Never Defend Me As It Is Unnecessary. Uh, and so it goes on to state, My dearly beloved daughter, I must inform you of the need to refrain from def defending my most holy word. Those who question my word must pray to me for guidance. I am instructing you now to never attempt to interpret the messages from my div divine lips. I have told you this many times, and you have not been given the authority to do so. Instead, accept my messages as they are. Again, uh, this is ludicrous and, and contrary to Catholic teaching. We know that we we have to defend uh, the Catholic faith. As a matter of fact, I just got off the uh, I just got off one of my social media outlets where I was trying to defend the faith from another Vatican II modernist. We have to defend uh, the proper interpretation. Of scripture from these modernists who, who do not have the proper uh, interpretation and that's really what it boils down to when, when we analyze the conciliar church is essentially they have the authority you know per se but they don't have the proper interpretation uh, and how do we know this we simply line it up with what tradition says so when we go to say um, the right to religious liberty heresy which I don't know how many popes, a dozen popes have uh, condemned. It's infallibly condemned through the ordinary magisterium. And now we go to Paul VI, who uh, taught this heresy. And subsequently, uh, the, his, uh, the popes after taught it. And obviously that flows down through the chain of command. It goes down through the um, cardinals, goes down through the bishops, you know, archbishops. And so... This, that's how heresy spreads. It, it's, it starts from the top, and it completely absorbs uh, the church as a whole. And um, we, know, uh, we, we know we have to refrain from it. Uh, so the point of the matter is, is concerning uh, the proper interpretation is we have to stay with what the church has always taught. And clearly these modernists, these liberals of Vatican II are not doing so. Uh, which we can prove time and time again from tradition. And so, once again, we must defend Jesus Christ. Obviously, we must defend the Catholic Church. We must defend Scripture. Uh, and it is uh, not only a, a right of ours to do so, it's a duty to do so, especially in this dark hour. I find that uh, too many are sitting on the sidelines and not getting in the fight. And uh, we all have a duty, even as laymen, to get out there and get in the fight. And so, uh, let us do so. Now, on October 11th, 2011, there was a title, uh, and this one was specific for America, uh, which stated, um, America, embrace your brothers and sisters of all denominations. And this is a supposed message coming from, <laughs> coming from heaven. Uh, let's see if we can read this one entirely. My children... A prayer, my children, will help mitigate the chastisement which my father will unleash in the world against the sin of abortion. Pray, pray, and unite to pay homage to my father, for by uniting together all religions who honor the father, God the creator of the world, you can help your country. I will stop right there and analyze that for a second. Now we know uh, America was founded upon in Masonic principles, right? Um, Americanism. Uh this notion that 
all religions can have a say, if you will, which is certainly not Catholic. That's why we've never been truly one nation under God. We, we've never been, because we have never been a Catholic nation. We've never up, upheld the only true religion of Jesus Christ. And so what, what we find interesting here is this, this talk of uniting together with all religions. And obviously they are false religions. Um, and so there is no uniting uh, with any false religions, and we'll get to that in a second, from what the church has said. But let us continue on in this message. Embrace your brothers and sisters of all uh, religious denominations who believe in God the Father and pray as one to redeem the sins of your country. My children, so vast is your country that it is important that I can save as many souls as possible. I can do this only through the conversion which shall happen during the warning and through your prayers and devotion. Okay, now my commentary uh, again here. This is one of the ones that stand out uh, like the sun at noonday. Uh, you know, let's just get right into what the church teaches on, on concerning praying with other false religions and, and heretics uh, from the Third Council of Constantinople. If any ecclesiastic or layman shall go into the synagogue of the Jews or meeting houses of the heretics to join in prayer with them, let them be deposed uh, and be deprived of communion. If any bishop or priest or deacon shall join in prayer with heretics, let him be suspended from communion. So here we have the Catholic Church uh, reiterating uh, that uh, they would be deposed of uh, by the church, and yet supposedly God is now speaking through Maria Divine Mercy saying, pray with other false religions. I don't think so. Uh, at the Council of Carthage, one must neither pray nor sing psalms with those who are cut off from communion of the church, whether clergy or laymen. Let him, if he d does so, let him be excommunicated. Council of Laodicea. No one shall pray in common with heretics and schismatics. Short and sweet. Fourth Lateran Council. We decree that those who give credence to the teachings of heretics, as well as those who receive, defend, or patronize them, are excommunicated. If anyone refuses to avoid such accomplices after they have been ostracized by the church, let them also be excommunicated. Okay, this is another reason why, uh, which keeps our position away from the pseudo-traditionalist position, because uh, we're obviously not going to patronize the modernists, we're not going to defend them, which the pseudo-traditionalists like Michael Voris do, uh, who hold uh, full communion with modernist Rome, which you cannot do to remain a Catholic, uh, but we have to keep our distances. Uh, we can't have them as accomplices. We can't be close to them and not expect for us to be affected. Uh, in my blog, Theological Ebola, I cover that. Uh, so please have a look at that blog in detail. Uh, let us see. From Pope Pius XI, he states, Is it permitted for Catholics to be present at or take part in conventions, gatherings, meetings, or so societies of non-Catholics which aim to associate together under a single agreement everyone who in any ways lays to, to claim the name of, of Christian? In the negative, he answers. It is clear, therefore, why this apostolic see has never allowed its subject to take part in these assemblies with non-Catholics. There is only one way in which unity of Christians may be fostered, and that is by the furthering by furthering the return to the one true church of Jesus Christ of which they are separated from. So again, the common error is that the conciliars have a completely erroneous notion of what unity is, and again it, it pertains to the underlying universalist heresy of modernist Rome, which comes from Freemasonry. 1917 Code of Canon Law further states, Is it permitted at all for the faithful to assist in any active manner or to have any part of worship uh, with non-Catholics? Uh, excuse me, it is not permitted. I said that wrong and I do apologize. Uh, and that's Canon 1258. Uh, and from the Baltimore Catechism, it's actually in the Council of Trent and also the Catechism of Pius X. But how does one sin against... How does a Catholic sin against the faith, and a Catholic can sin against the faith by apostasy, heresy, indifferentism, or by taking uh, part in non-Catholic worship? And again, this whole breakdown and erroneous notion of what unity is ultimately now has 
um, you know, what we see today with Francis. I mean, he's buddy buddy with the Charismatics and all of these uh, these other groups. We've, we've seen the popes go into mosques and into Jewish uh, synagogues, and uh, they've cut themselves they've cut themselves off in so many different ways from the church. It really would take a full episode to, to cover that. Uh, they do not follow tradition at all. Uh, and so I'm not going to get into the rest of these quotes, but essentially you get the, the understanding um, that we do not have unity with those. Um, we do not have unity with those who are separated from the true bonds uh, of the Catholic faith. Uh, and so here's a, a specific message. It is on June 25th, 2011, covering the millennialist heresy. Uh, it's entitled, First Message from God the Father. The time has now come for me to reclaim my glorious kingdom. The new paradise on earth will last a thousand years. Well, there you have it. Uh, furthermore, it goes on to say, It will last the thousand years on earth, and no one must be excluded, for that would break my heart. My beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are trying to bring back, bring you back into my loving uh, fold so that the paradise created in the beginning can once again emerge as the greatest gift to all uh, of my children. And again, this is the blatant millennialist heresy. Um, we have another uh, message from April April 6, 2011. Never judge other uh, religions, creeds, or sexual prefer preferences. Uh, and so we know... Um, let's see. The, the message actually states, Warning to believers who look down on other creeds. If my believers differentiate themselves in place and exalt themselves at the, at the expense of of others, those who are unaware of my teachings, then they are just behaving as the Pharisees did, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but when, uh, but when, ultimately she states, but when you condemn them or judge others because of their faith, they offend me greatly. What we have to understand is on the objective level, yes, we can make judgments. If someone is in a... Um, uh, sexual relationship, if you will, whether they're a lesbian or homosexual, however you want to say it, we have the right and, and duty as a Catholic to go to them and say, you cannot do that. This is what God teaches. Uh, and so we are making objective judgments that what they are doing are wrong. Are we condemning them to hell? No, obviously not. Uh, but the problem is, is um, the, the problem is, is when you get into the conciliar church, um, with this false notion of mercy and this false understanding of what true love is, is you can no longer speak against anyone. Uh, and that's the problem. Uh, and we see this kind of underlying tone with the Maria Divine Mercy uh, messages. You know, don't, don't uh, you know, she goes on to say here, embrace each other, show compassion to each other. Don't exclude uh, anyone, irrespective as to whether they are Catholics, other Christian denominations, Islam, Hindu, Jews, Buddhists, even those new cults which have emerged who do not even believe, believe in God. Uh, and so we have to understand uh, that true love uh, is always indicative of truth and charity uh, remaining together. So if you are remaining silent when someone is in error and someone is not in the truth, uh, then we have the right to make that judgment. We have the right to judge and say, hey, listen, you're not following uh, in conjunction with uh, what truth has revealed. And we know this to come through the Catholic Church alone. So, uh, again, this is a uh, a portion of the Maria Divine Mercy that you will find pretty uh, prevalent, this whole notion of, of, of not judging others. Uh, and, again, this is on the objective level, not the subjective level. Um Another message here is May 5th, 2011. She states, uh, all Christians repent now. Catholics pray for Pope Benedict. Um, as you continue to publish these messages, please encourage as many people as you know to seek reconciliation quickly now for their sins. It does not matter which Christian faith they belong to. They must show their humility and allegiance to me through the act of seeking redemption. 
Okay, commentary on this is this classic uh, Vatican II nonsense of trying to uh, make it seem like there are other Christians outside of the Catholic Church, and they truly are not. Those who are separated from the Catholic Church, uh, in this sense, are heretics. Uh, there are no other uh, Christian denominations. Um, uh, let's go back to the, what she specifically says. It does not matter which Christian faith you belong to. Well, there is no other Christian faith other than the Catholic faith. Uh, so again, this is giving credence to the Protestant sects. This is another one of those blatant um, uh, heresies that stand out like a sun in the sky that clearly denote this to not to be from uh, Our Lady and Our Lord. And so we can definitely say that she is uh, a false messenger, if you will, a false visionary. And so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of leave it there. I think we're, we're, we've, we've done enough. Uh, and again, I will go back through, and, and this was quite a few years ago. I'll try to go back maybe over the next week and, and, and cover the, the last six months to a year or so. Hopefully get some time to doing that. But uh, just overall, please understand that the triumph of the Immaculate Heart uh, is not going to happen in conjunction with the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is uh, predominantly taught uh, by the MDM. And so we must avoid her. And again, for those uh, for those who are running around stating that our position is bogus, so to speak, because we hold that Benedict the Sixteenth is Pope, and that's essentially MDM's position, uh, they must know and understand that we condemn them every bit as much as you condemn them, even though you're still not coming from the, the, the proper perspective because you're coming from the modernist seat, if you will. Uh, we um, clearly uh, denote her to be a false visionary, and we are at least thankful that those in the Novus Ordo can see that um, she too is uh, false. It's just now we have to pray for those to wake up on the uh, Medjugorje, uh, false, vis uh, false visions and, and, and apparitions that are going on there. Uh, and so we will conclude this uh, tonight. Again, I, I appreciate you bearing with me uh, tonight. We have gone about an hour, so I will break this into uh, two parts. Again, look for an upcoming TC uh, Tri-Cat Night radio show on the uh, Divine Mercy. Uh, we will also... Uh, try to handle uh, Jews and the New World Order and their connection. Please invite your friends to Tradcat Night, tradcatnight.blogspot.com. Every night uh, there is the general news going up along the right-hand side, showing and demonstrating these times in which we live, uh, kind of as a litmus or barometer, uh, litmus test or a barometer, if you will, of uh, how closely we are moving towards the great chastisements. Uh, for those, for those of you again who would like a one-on-one -on -one session, if you will, whether you're Catholic or not, uh, whether you're in the Novus Ordo or you're a traditionalist or even a, uh, what I would call a sensible state of a contest, uh, please, by all means, you know, uh, send me over a message, and uh, we can possibly set up a time here very soon to either communicate via Skype or via the phone. So until next time, my friends, please keep me in prayer. Let us stay close to uh, the rosary and the scapular. And um, uh, please continue to keep uh, my prayers, uh, to keep me in your prayers, and to keep this apostolate uh, in your prayers. And uh, once again, I, I welcome all those who are new to Tradcat Night. God bless and have a good night. Ave Maria.